my fellow Whovians, how you guys doing? This is Alan, and I'm back once again with another Doctor Who review for you. And today I'm going to be reviewing the 115th Doctor Who story, The Keeper of Traken, starring Tom Baker as the fourth Doctor. And the plot of The Keeper of Traken is as follows. Reading it from the back of the tape. The Empire of Traken has lived in total harmony for over a thousand years, governed by the sacred Keeper and his loyal consuls. Until now. Fading fast, the Keeper calls the Doctor and Adric to Traken, fearing the impending disintegration of his world and the onset of a terrible evil. For the malignant presence of the Melker lurks close by, growing stronger, plotting to replace the Keeper upon his death. The Doctor must stop it before it gains control of the Source, the energy that sustains the very life of the planet. But just who is controlling the Melker? The Doctor smells a rat of the very oldest kind. And that's your plot of The Keeper of Traken. Alrighty then, uh, The Keeper of Traken, Tom Baker's penultimate story as the Doctor. Very good, very, very good uh, Doctor Who story. In fact, uh, this would probably be, I think so far this is my second favorite story from Tom Baker's final season. Still my number one fave being State of Decay, then Keeper of Traken, and then Meglos in third. But Keeper of Traken, very, very good. I mean, I enjoyed this story uh, just fine when I was a kid, watching it now. I still enjoy it. I think it's very, very good. And um, it, as I said, considering that this is the second to last story for Tom Baker, only one story left, you know, Legopolis, but this is his second to last story. Tom Baker seems to be having fun in, in this particular story. Again, he's got John Nathan Turner, producer, watching over the proceedings. But um, I think in this particular story, Tom Baker's allowed just enough humor. It's still not the complete return of, of the Tom Baker Doctor that I know and love from the first six seasons, but it's close enough. This is another very good, solid performance from Tom Baker, and he's allowed to have fun, I think. For the last time, <laughs> considering what's what's in store for him in his final story, Legopolis, uh, which we will get to next time. Uh, Matthew Waterhouse as Adric. You know, I have to admit, Adric is pretty good in this story. Uh, he's allowed to do some important stuff and uh, and not come across like a like a brat. I mean, he's still not one of my favorite companions. He's never going to be one of my favorite companions. But I have to admit, as now that I'm re-watching the stories with Adric, he is allowed the occasional story where he's actually not bad. <laughs> and he, he's actually helpful to the Doctor. And such is the case here with uh, the Keeper of Traken, as uh, Adric is allowed to be helpful and to do some productive stuff and help the Doctor uh, in his adventure. And uh, Matthew Waterhouse, good performance, good solid performance from Matthew Waterhouse. Uh, not the greatest of actors, but I would say uh, he gets the job done in this story as Adric. It is also worth noting that uh, the Doctor is going to get himself a new companion in the form of Nyssa, played by Sarah Sutton. Even though she doesn't actually step into the TARDIS at the very end of this story to join the Doctor and Adric on their adventures, uh, the Doctor and Adric fly off without her, but She'll be brought back for the next story, Legopolis, and then from that point on, she's officially a companion. And uh, yes, Nyssa, played by Sarah Sutton. I have to say, Nyssa is another one of the Doctor Who companions that's not very high on my list of favorite companions. Don't get me wrong, Sarah Sutton, she's very pretty. But uh, I have to admit, I never liked the way... Uh, her character Nyssa was written because Nyssa to me came across more often than not as very I mean almost as arrogant as, as Adric you know arrogant you know very snotty in some episodes and and the writers seem to make her more intelligent than the Doctor as soon as Peter Davison comes in as the fifth Doctor there are some adventures where the Doctor can't figure out something but Nyssa figures it out for him and that always pissed me off the way the writers would do that during the Peter Davison era, uh, that Nyssa seemed to be a little bit more intelligent than the Doctor, and that's just wrong. There's nothing wrong with having an intelligent companion, but the Doctor is supposed to be the most intelligent person in that TARDIS, not the companion. When Peter Davison gets on board the TARDIS, we'll discuss more about that. Uh, but being that this is Nyssa's introductory story, uh, thankfully she's relegated to being a supporting player. And uh, yeah, Sarah Sutton is indeed very good in her debut uh, performance as Nyssa. And uh, yeah, very cute, very pretty young woman. And uh, it's a good performance, I'd say, 
indeed from Sarah Sutton in her in her debut performance. In her debut performance, she's likable, but I have to be honest, you know, she's not one of my favorite companions as uh, she's going to be a little stuck up later on when Peter Davison shows up, but we'll talk more about that later. But for now, Sarah Sutton, not bad as Nyssa in her debut story. Uh, regarding the rest of the supporting cast, the standouts for me, well, it has to be said, I, I completely forgot to mention this, that one of the other things about the Keeper of Trocken is that this story also features the return of the Master. Dun dun, yes, the Master. And um, now when we last saw the Master, he was in his, his you know, ugly skeletal skin peeling off, you know, disgusting look. With, with the black hoodie and uh, everything. Uh, and that was in the story, The Deadly Assassin. And uh, this time around, he comes back as his ugly skeletal self, although they've improved the makeup on, on the actor playing him. This time played by actor Jeffrey Beavers. Uh, and you may be interested to know, Jeffrey Beavers is uh, the widower of the late, great, lovely actress, Carolyn John, who played Liz Shaw uh, during the John Pertwee era of Doctor Who. Uh, but yeah, Jeffrey Beavers, he gets to play the master uh, in the story, and he's mostly unseen for most of the story, but then we finally see him, I think, at towards the end of episode three, and then through uh, episode four, and again, they improved his, his master skeletal makeup, so we can see his face better, and yes, Jeffrey Beaver is very good, very appropriately evil as the master in this story, so I, I liked him very much, and I, it also has to be said, though, that uh, there's another actor in the supporting cast, and his name is Anthony Ainley, who would become the next master, because as you see, Jeffrey Beavers' master eventually takes over the body of Anthony Ainley's character, Tremus. And somehow, I don't know how the master is able to do this, but the master merges his body into Tremus and takes over Tremus' body. And then from that point on, Anthony Ainley is the master. Uh, but anyway, Anthony Ainley, for most of the story, he's playing the role of Tremus. And by the way, Tremus spelled T-R-E-M-A-S, that's an anagram for master, just so you know. Uh, but Anthony Ainley playing Tremus for the majority of the story, or, you know, Nissa's father, uh, we actually get to see Anthony Ainley playing a good guy for the one and only time <laughs> in the history of Doctor Who. And uh, yes, very good performance, very, very likable in the role of Tremus. And like I said, this is the only time we're gonna see Anthony Ainley playing a good guy in Doctor Who before he becomes the master. And um, yes, yes, very good, very enjoyable performance uh, from, from Ainley as uh, Tremus. Uh, he only gets to play the master for the final seconds of The Keeper of Traken. But, but anyway, Anthony Ainley will become the new master and he will remain the master for the entire remaining run of the classic Doctor Who series. And uh, I will say this right now, that uh, while Anthony Ainley is no Roger Delgado, uh, Roger Delgado for me will always be the definitive master, even though there have been many other uh, good masters, but Anthony Ainley, he's, he's a good master. I mean, I think Roger Delgado will forever remain the best master, but uh, Ainley, He's good. He's certainly good. And, I mean, he'll, he'll do. He doesn't erase the memory of Roger Delgado for me, but obviously we can't have Roger Delgado anymore, Lord rest his soul, since he died in a car accident uh, back in 73, I think it was. So Anthony Ainley, he's, he's good. And, you know, he has his own, you know, distinct evil charm about him. So I guess what I'm trying to say is while Roger Delgado will always be my favorite master, Anthony Ainley, certainly a good master. And uh, it is nice to see him pop up every so often in the classic Doctor Who series, giving the Doctor some trouble as, as the new master. So I give Anthony Ainley, who, by the way, he passed away in 2004 of uh, cancer. So Anthony Ainley, I salute you. Um, but nonetheless, he is good as the new master. But I really enjoyed his, his, the majority of his performance here in Keeper of Track and playing the good guy, Nissa's father, named Tremus. Other standouts in the cast... For me are Sheila Ruskin as Cassia, who's uh, the wife of Tremus and mother of Nyssa, and uh, she falls under the spell of the Melkor statue. By the way, for case you're wondering what the heck is the Melkor, there, there's the Melkor. <laughs> the Melkor is this, uh, this stone statue that, uh, that appears in the garden of, uh, of Traken. And it turns out it's actually the Master's TARDIS, <laughs> the disguise as a stone statue. But that's the Melker, folks, right there. That's the Melker. The Melker is cool in this story. I like its design, whether it's being a stone statue in the garden or whether it walks around. You know, you've got an actor inside and, and they're walking around. It, it's, it's a pretty cool looking statue, the Melker. So I like the Melker. But anyway, Sheila Ruskin plays Cassia. 
this is mother, wife of Tremus, and she falls under the spell of the Melkor, and she's quite good. She's very, very good. Very, very strong performance as a, as a woman who's, uh, she gets corrupted. She basically just gets corrupted by the Melkor and ultimately pays the price for it, but uh, she is quite good. Sheila Ruskin, yes, I like her very much as Cassia. Dennis Carey, who appears as the Keeper, uh, and the Keeper basically sits in a chair, and he has all this power in, in running Traken, and, you know, he can... Uh, he teleport but he's always always sitting in his chair he never leaves the chair he always sits in his chair and uh, Dennis Carey we saw him previously in the unfinished Doctor Who story Shada playing Professor Cronotus so it's nice to see uh, Dennis Carey one more time uh, here as the keeper even though he's under heavy makeup this time but uh, nonetheless very good to see him he's very good in his supporting role as the keeper Great uh, production values in this in this story. I love the whole garden of Traken and the various rooms, the, the, the throne room where, where the keeper sits is very impressive. Really good production values, very good handsome production values here in the Keeper of Traken, so I like that very much. The script by Johnny Byrne is very good. The direction by John Black is very good. Nothing about the story smacks of classic. There's the pattern of now we have a scene of talking, now we have a scene of running around. Now we have another scene of talking, now we have another scene of running around. And I also have to confess, it's, it's also a big bummer for me to see uh, the character of Tremus succumb to the Master and have his body taken over by the Master. In effect, killing Tremus as the Master uh, takes over his body. Oh, and by the way, one, one more thing. How does the Master actually merge with the person's body that he takes over. How does he just somehow melt into the person's body? They use a, a split screen special effect uh, to have uh, Jeffrey Beaver's master merge with Anthony Ainley as Tremus, and then that somehow makes uh, you know a regeneration happen. And oh, and not only that, it also changes the master's clothing. So now he's not wearing the, the ripped up hoodie anymore. Now he's wearing his proper black uh, outfit. So how does it change the clothing as well as the body? I mean, how is the master able to do that? He can just enter into somebody's body. Uh, must have been, I guess it has something to do with the fact that when Tremus touched the master's TARDIS, which is now in the shape of a grandfather clock, it did something to his body that allowed the master to literally just enter into his body. It's weird. It's really hard to explain. But anyway, this is a very good Doctor Who story overall. I think it's very enjoyable. I like it very, very much. And like I said, I think it's the last time Tom Baker's Doctor gets to have any fun. It's the last time that his Doctor is still left standing at the end of the story. And, and by the way, the very last time we see Tom Baker's Doctor in this story, the very last shot of him and Adric flying away in the TARDIS and Tom Baker's flashing that big toothy grin of his, uh, which is nice to see. Although we know that uh, Tom Baker's Doctor meets his fate in the very next story. But we haven't gotten to that final story yet. For now, all is well <laughs> with the fourth Doctor. And uh, the Keeper of Traken is, at the end, a very good, very solid, entertaining Doctor Who story. I can't say it's a classic, but it is a very good, solid, penultimate story for Tom Baker. The Keeper of Traken. I like it very, very much. And that's my review of The Keeper of Traken. Well, folks, this has been quite a ride reviewing the Tom Baker era, and the Tom Baker era is almost at a close. Tom Baker has been playing the Doctor now for seven years, and I think he's still going to hold that record forever. At the very same time, not even Tom Baker can play the Doctor forever. And next time on Doctor Who Review... It will be time to say goodbye to the fourth Doctor. Tom Baker takes his final bow as our favorite Time Lord in his grand finale, Legopolis. Tom Baker goes out, and Peter Davison comes in. Legopolis. Next time on Doctor Who Review. This is Alan. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. And I'll see you next time.